Hi, my name is Roger Ramirez and welcome to r and Studio. Today we are going to be talking about my process of live streaming a full band to social media, whether it is YouTube, Facebook or Twitter. We are going to be focusing on how my audio is set up and how my video is set up. Here at r and Studio we use OBS as a direct path to the internet and that is the open broadcasting software. Stay tuned for a whole lot of information. Let's focus on the audio. The first thing to think about before live streaming a full band is space. Do I have enough room? Will the band be comfortable? These questions are important because having enough space between the instruments will determine the quality of the audio that you will capture. One good practice is to be able to have different booths for different instruments. For example, the drums, guitar and bass amps, or vocals. If having different booths is not possible, having enough separation between the instruments will help with the bleeding over of the audio on the microphone. For example, you don't want to have the drums next to the vocal microphone. That is just not good practice. You want to be in control of the sound. Remember, the more in control you are of the sound, the better and cleaner your mix will be on social media. Here at R&R Studio, we practice separating the instruments into different booths. We built five different booths that we can work with. Depending on how big the band is, will determine the combination of where the instruments are placed in the studio. I just want to point out that although the booths are isolated from each other, we decided to separate them with glass walls. The musicians are still able to see each other and interact with each other while performing. r and Studio houses the Midas M32, big brother to the X32. By the way, Midas, you make a great sounding product. The M32 comes with 32 local XLR microphone inputs and 16 local XLR bus mix outputs. We also purchased the Midas DL16 for more complex configurations if ever needed. Let's talk about snakes, audio snakes. The three furthest booths from the control room are equipped with audio snakes that are hooked up directly to the back of the M32. These snakes were run under the booth while we were constructing the studio. The drum booth is equipped with a 16 channel audio snake, 12 XLR and 4 TRS inputs. The bass booth and the guitar booth both have an 8 channel audio snake, 6 XLRs and 2 TRS. These three booths can be used in any combination depending on the band's configuration. The small vocal booth is run directly to the mixer via a trapdoor on the wall because of its close proximity. It is equipped with an XLR line for a microphone and one TRS line for whatever is needed in the booth. Normally, one line for XLR and one TRS is plenty for that booth. The booth is not that big, so we put either one singer in there or a horn player. But we can definitely add more lines if needed. Let's talk about in-ear monitors. r and Studio uses in-ear monitor mixes for everyone during the live sessions for three major reasons. One, it definitely makes for capturing a much cleaner sound. Two. It takes feedback issues out of the equation. Three, so that everybody can hear each other. Since everyone is isolated in different audio booths, it is essential that everybody can hear each other. We have taken 10 out of the 16 bus mixes out of the M32 and have turned them into eight mono in-ear lines and one stereo in-ear mix. The first eight mono mixes are run from the back of the M32 into a headphone amplifier, the PowerPlay Pro 8, which then distributes 
the lines throughout the studio via the TRS connections in the audio snakes that are ran to every booth. By the way, TRS stands for tip, ring, and sleeve. You can run stereo lines through there or mono lines for in-ear mixes. The 9 stereo in-ear mix runs into a wireless Sennheiser stereo transmitter for wireless monitoring. All of these independent audio mixes can be controlled by the engineer in session or also by the band member directly by downloading the M32 QMix app, which actually is suggested. In that case, everybody can have control of their own mix and can change it at their own discretion without affecting anybody else's mixes whenever they want to. Let's talk about microphones. We have been talking about capturing audio in the studio, but we have not once mentioned what microphones we are using to capture that audio. We decided here at r, &R Studio that we were going to use a combination of condenser and dynamic Shure microphones. For example, for vocals, we use the Shure Beta 87A condensers and also the Shure Beta 58A microphones. For instruments and toms, we use the Shure Beta 57A. For our snare, we use the Shure Beta 56A condenser microphone. For our overheads and hi-hats, we use the Shure SM81 condenser microphone. For our kick drum, we use the Shure Beta 52A microphone. Now, how do we get the audio to OBS? By the way, we are using OBS, the open broadcasting software, to live stream our audio and video. Now that we have covered how to capture clean isolated audio and which types of microphones we use, let's focus on getting the audio that will be streamed live to our social media. The M32 has multiple ways of outputting the master audio that can be used for streaming. I decided to use the stereo monitor out of the mixer. This audio feed mirrors the master left and right output pre-fader with its own volume control. What this means is that if you have a singer in the control booth, this booth, my Yamaha X8 monitors can be completely down in volume while still streaming to our social media. Bringing the volume down in the master will not affect our live stream. That's why it's pre-fader. The stereo monitor feed from the M32 is connected to an external audio interface dedicated to OBS. We are using the PreSonus AudioBox i2. This connects to the computer via USB 3.0 and it is recognized by OBS as an input device for the audio. I decided to do it this way because the M32 USB card is already configured to multi-track with my DAW. I didn't want to change those settings. We here in the studio also have recording sessions and we record to Pro Tools and Logic. I didn't want to change that. Everyone may have a different way of doing things, and this is the way that I do it. There is no right or wrong way of doing this as long as it works. And it works for me fine. If you have any comments or questions, please write it in the comments section. I will be glad to answer them. Please remember to subscribe to our channel and share this video. Thank you for watching. We talked about audio, now let's move to video. How many of you wish that when you did a live feed to social media, not only were you able to capture great audio quality, but also an awesome video feed? Let's even push it a little bit further. How about being able to switch, let's say, between one to eight or 10 cameras without interrupting your live feed? Today, I'm going to show you how I accomplished this in my live stream studio. By the way, this is Houston's first online live performing venue. Let's talk about cameras. As mentioned previously, my live streaming studio has five booths, 
and I have equipped it with eight GoPro cameras. GoPro Hero 4 Silvers to be exact. Two are in the drum booth for the front and back, one in the bass booth, one in the guitar booth, one in the vocal booth, one on the piano, one on the back of the control booth, and one on the control booth desk. That way people can see the engineer as well. I have owned these cameras for about six years and finally decided to utilize them for the live streaming. I have made tons of videos in the past, but everything was done in post-production. I really like these cameras because of the way that they capture color, the choice from narrow to super view lens is awesome because I don't have extremely large booths and if I put uh, like a big camera in there it's just gonna take too much room. I also love the versatility of how you can attach these cameras to practically anything. Now you may ask yourself how in the hell are you going to use 8 GoPros to live stream to social media, to YouTube, Facebook and Twitter? How is that going to work? Before I show you how I'm going to do this, remember to subscribe, the red button and hit the bell so that you will be notified whenever we have our live streams. The first thing that I did was to buy a professional video switcher. I purchased the Data Video SE2800 digital video switcher. This switcher has a total of 12 inputs and two different configurations. You can either have 12 HD SDI inputs or 8 HD SDIs and 4 HDMI inputs. The next part of the operation was to interface the 8 HDMI GoPro cameras to the video switcher. This was not as easy of a task as I thought that it was going to be. You know how you hear all the time about 1080p or 1080i resolution and you never pay attention to that? Well, when it comes to this, it matters. And it matters a whole lot when trying to interface consumer level cameras, which are the GoPros, to professional grade video switchers. So it turned out that my GoPro camera's local output is a micro HDMI 1080p and my switcher could only accept 1080i whether it is HDMI or HD SDI. Houston, we have a huge problem. This would be the same thing as getting two people who speak Spanish and Chinese who have never met to write a song together. It just was not going to happen without involving extra technology. The first thing that I had to do was purchase 8 micro HDMI cables to convert to regular HDMI, which was a pretty simple and inexpensive purchase. Once I received these cables, I had to make another purchase, and let me tell you, this was not going to be a cheap one. In order to get the video switcher to work with the GoPro cameras, I had to turn the HDMI 1080p out of each camera into a 1080i HD SDI in order for the switcher to accept it. After many hours of research and a ton of headaches, I realized that what I needed to purchase was eight video signal scalers which would convert and scale down my GoPros from HDMI 1080p, which equals progressive, into HD SDI 1080i, which is interlaced. So what did I do? I purchased 8 MD Cross HDMI 3G HD SDI cross converters with scaling and frame rate conversion scalers made by Decimator. There was no way around this besides upgrading my cameras which would have been way more expensive or get a different video switcher which would have been also a more expensive choice due to the amount of inputs that I needed for my live stream. These scalers were also an expensive choice but I figured that it was the best solution to my problem and it turned out to be exactly what I needed. Once I received the scalers which I was extremely excited about, 
I was able to connect all of my GoPro cameras to the switcher. Here's an example of how each camera is connected to a scaler and then to the video switcher. Out of the GoPro's micro HDMI, we come out 1080p into the input of the decimator regular HDMI. Now the decimator will convert our signal and scale down to 1080i and from the decimator we come out HD SDI which from there we go directly into the back of the switcher. Here I will show you how all of the cameras look connected to the switcher. It looks super awesome. Having this video switcher will allow me to switch seamlessly between eight cameras while maintaining one solid stream for the live stream. This is like the equivalent of having an audio mixer but for video cameras. It's like a super cool concept. So I have the audio mixer and the video mixer. I have been making music videos for about 10 years and one of my signatures is the use of multi-view in my video. What I mean by that is that I show all of the camera angles at the same time while the band is performing. This is very interactive and very pleasing to the eye. So again, I ask myself, man, I ask myself a lot of questions. How can I show all of the camera angles at the same time in one signal in a live feed to social media? So again, after a lot of thinking, a lot of headaches, and a lot of research, this time I decided to contact my friends from AVRG, Audiovisual Resource Group, and we came up with a plan. I ended up purchasing the Demon 6S this is a multi-viewer, again, made by Decimator, that will allow me to show six cameras all in one signal, while at the same time allowing me to maintain individual signals of every camera. This is exactly what I needed to finish my setup, and at the same time, give it my signature. As of now, we have only been talking about video inputs, Let's talk a little bit about the video outputs from the switcher. The data video switcher has a built-in multi-view feature that allows you to see exactly what every camera is doing at the same time. I literally fell in love with this feature because if I could put a multi-view monitor in every booth, then everybody could not only hear each other, but at the same time, they could see what every camera is doing. I like to refer to this as the ultimate interfacing in the studio. It is pretty much the thing that will tie everything up together. What I had to do in order to make this happen was this. I took one of the HDMI 1080i multi-view outputs from the video switcher and I converted it to HD SDI 1080i. There was no need to scale here, just converting. I used the Aja model HA5 to convert from HDMI 1080i to HD SDI 1080i. Once this conversion took place, I extended an HD SDI cable from the Aja HA5 converter to a central location in the studio into an HD SDI distribution amplifier. The Aja 3G DA 3G SDI. Once this DA was connected and powered up, I split off four different lines of HD SDI cable and I ran them into every booth in the studio where the multi view was going to be placed. Finally, once these lines were ran to the location of the monitors with the HD SDI cable, there was one final conversion that needed to take place. I converted the HD SDI 1080i signal coming from the SDI DA into an HDMI 1080i signal in order to connect it to the monitors. These conversions were done by using the HDMI 3G HD SDI SDI bidirectional converters 
made by Decimator. This was done to every booth that had a multi-viewer monitor installed in. Once this task was accomplished and the cables were cleaned up, the outcome was beautiful. Now regardless what is being streamed out to social media, everybody in the studio can see what every camera is doing at any one time. And this is a beautiful thing. The very last thing to talk about is how on earth do we connect the switcher and make it send the signal from our cameras to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. My video switcher has three built-in HD-SDI outputs that can be assigned and utilized in different ways. I took one of the HD-SDI outputs and assigned it to output my program out. The program out is the video signal that will be streamed out to social media. This is what people will see on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. After I assigned this output, I took that HD SDI line and connected it to the Aja UTAP SDI to USB converter. OBS at that point will detect this USB device and use it as a video input device on the computer. I decided to do things this way as opposed to having all eight cameras connected to the USB inputs of my computer with eight HDMI to USB converters. By the way, my computer does not even have eight USB ports and I didn't want my computer to be processing the conversion of eight different cameras all at the same time while also trying to hold a steady stream out to the internet. The chances and the possibilities for failures were much higher by doing it this way. Yes, I decided to go the expensive route, but I feel that this is the best way to accomplish this while also maintaining the chance for computer glitches at a minimum. I wanted my computer to focus all of its processing power on maintaining a solid, smooth stream for people to enjoy. Doing it this way, my computer only has to focus on one single video feed that comes from the switcher because all of the switching of the eight cameras and the addition of the multiviewer gets processed by the switcher before hitting the computer. Using the video switcher gives me flexibility to grow and add more cameras without having to worry if it would be too much for the computer to process and keep up with. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out or add it to the comment section. I will answer all of these questions as they come. Also. If there are any details or anything I may have overlooked, please let me know. There is a lot of information in this video and I will gladly clear things up. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video. Until next time.